Hi Pisces Sun and Rising, welcome to your September 2024 astral update. It's Raina here out in nature and so if you hear noises like that plane that just went by uh, or is going by, that's why. Uh, sometimes it's easier for me to record outside and uh, and yet then you have to deal with this. Oh well. But anyway, wow, um, you're one of the first videos I'm doing for this uh, month because you're kind of uh, the center of it all, really, because there's going to be a lunar eclipse in your sign. And a lunar eclipse is a powerful full moon, so this should bring a lot of dramatic changes to your life. Maybe endings, maybe things that you've been working on coming to fruition. But I like to start at the beginning and work my way uh, down through the month. So I'm going to get to that when I get to that, because that's actually going to be mid-month. I want to start with the beginning of the month. And um, at this time, as the month begins, it's like right out of the box. We have uh, transits on the first. Now, you know, I'm sure this has happened many times before, but it doesn't always happen. And we have a lot more major transits than I can remember in recent months. Plus, we have eclipse season. We have um, the changing of the seasons altogether, you know, the literal seasons. We're going into uh, an, an equinox. Uh, we're going to have one of those, and that's a very powerful period, just like the solstice is in the summer and the winter. Uh, in northern hemisphere, this is the fall, southern, the spring. And these are very important times of the year, depending on where you live. But anyway, on the first of the month, Pluto goes back into Capricorn. Pluto's been uh, retrograding in Aquarius, which is, for you, the 12th house, the house that you rule in astrology. And going back into the 11th house. Okay. So uh, I was going to say maybe there's actually a little bit of relief when that happens. Because Pluto in the 12th house is pretty intense. Uh, even if you're a Pisces, it's kind of intense. But um, anyway, um, Uranus is also on the same day going retrograde in Taurus. And that is your third house. And this is the house of social media. So... Um, I, I wouldn't, I was going to say you could do this on your own, but you may end up doing this and not even remembering that I mentioned it. You might just throw up your hands and do this anyway. I would say this is a great time for a social media detox when Uranus is retrograding the third house because Uranus relates to technology and Third house is social media, communication in general. And when a planet is retrograding, it's internalizing the effects and it brings it back to you. So I'll give you a perfect example of this. And I don't know if this is true for a lot of Pisces people because you may be the kind of people who prefer to deal with people in person rather than through Facebook or whatever. But some people like, or it seems like a lot of people these days, they would rather text others than actually, you know, call them on the phone. And it's like the more impersonal, the better. When, when cell phones first came out and when smartphones came, first came out, people, you know, were really into their ringtones. They wanted to show off that they had a cell phone in the first place. And it was super obnoxious. And then all of a sudden, people realized that having a cell phone was a pain in the ass. You know, having people, I'm not having a cell phone, but having people call them all the time. So then they started, you know, putting the ringer on silent. And now they just probably turn it off or don't even bother to look at it. And they text people instead of like actually talking to them because it was just too much. Um, so while you've had Uranus in the third house, some of you may have felt the urge to 
utilize technology to like um, bring a mess, uh, kind of like spread a message because Uranus rules Aquarius and, Aquari and, and rules the 11th house in astrology, which is another house of the internet, but is the house of the collective. And so for those Pisces people who have a message, you may have uh, been using social media to spread it, but, and, and for, for Pisces, a lot of times I think this would involve um, anything to do with spiritual matters, for instance, and things like that. Maybe you're a tarot reader or whatever, and that's cool. But as you know, it's a double-edged sword. So you may have experienced the negative side of, you know, social media and because you're Pisces, you're really um, sensitive to trolls and all that stuff. And there are people that definitely should limit their exposure to social media because they take things to heart. So if you're one of those people, then um, don't think because other people are on it all the time that you should be. Uh, tune into your own needs for sure. But um, I feel like this is something that can be good for anyone, uh, this Uranus, um, as it pertains to tuning into yourself. I always see Uranus as this intuitive um, influence and, and your, your um, telepathic abilities. And, but tuning into yourself, because a lot of times there can be a blind spot with people who are psychic. And I think, I think uh, Pisces is the most psychic sign. So, um, you know, strengthening that, meaning that you're getting rid of the subjectivity, which kind of blocks the ability to receive messages very um, clearly without distortion. So that's one thing I could see with that. Um, Pluto back into Capricorn is going to be your 11th house. And Pluto is about power. Do, you know, how do we give away our power? Now, there, I, I feel like when Pluto is direct, we're looking at it from the outer perspective of like, what are these entities that are trying to take power from us? But when we um, have a retrograde with Pluto, it's all about how are we giving away our power. So this is with other people. Now, again, social media, um, other pe like groups of people, um, your, friend, your friends, if you're the one, you know, it's funny because you're ruled by Neptune. And if somebody has Neptune in the 11th house, they can be the friend that's always like, you know, cooking for their friends, doing everything for their friends. And then when they need help, everybody's busy, you know, that's the Piscean kind of a thing. So being able to feel, you know, personally empowered so that other people can't take advantage of you because you have this, like, it's almost like an energetic boundary that, that prevents, and then you don't have to, it's not like awkward because you're just, you, they know where you stand. Um, so anyway, that's happening on the first of the month, and I'm already nine minutes into this. I'm going to have to pick things up. On the second, we have a new moon at 11 degrees of Virgo. Virgo is your opposite sign. The opposite house is the house of relationships, seventh house, where Virgo, this new moon is going to be. Um, I do believe I had a personal, uh, like a, a, I had a client who had a new moon in the seventh house or maybe a solar eclipse, and they were actually in the process of getting divorced. A new moon means a new situation. So it, it doesn't mean that this is, I, I, something is con, uh, continuing to stay the same in a certain area. It could be that you're experiencing um, a new status to your relationship, i.e., you know, that person is your ex. And 
I do believe that this is going to be a theme for some of you. And if you're afraid of that, I'm not saying that this is happening right now. This could have already happened, um, but you're, you might be getting used to it. And although it's messy in the, when it's happening, eventually this can be something that you look back on and say, wow, this is the best thing that ever happened to me because I really wasn't happy, even if the other person initiated it. Um, but this could be like getting engaged, getting married, moving in with someone, you know, increasing your commitment, honoring your commitment. This can even be like a business partnership. It doesn't have to be anything um, romantic. It could be, uh, get, it, this can be your clients. If you have clients, you get new clients somehow. And maybe it is from the internet. <laughs> because by the way, um, having social media, sometimes people are using it for business purposes. The third house can be business. So um, all of that can be affected by, by that. Um, on the 4th, so that just two days after the new moon, Mars goes into Cancer. Now, Mars has been in fellow mutable sign Gemini for quite a while. And that is your fourth house of home and family. So something may, uh, with Mars, Mars is not a touchy-feely, warm and fuzzy influence. It can be combative. It can be very fiery, independent, and at the very least, there's a lot of energy being generated. And this is in the house of home and family. So usually we think about when we think about home and family in a positive way, we're thinking about the place where we go to lay down our head, where we feel is our safe space. Mars here can mean that there is some kind of a conflict. So if somebody is thinking about getting divorced, they may do so because they're tired of the um, inharmonious environment that their home life is, is all about. But um, Mars in the fourth house can also be that, that you're getting work done on your house, you know, like construction, anything that is very vigorous. So it, could, it, it might have nothing to do with um, that kind of thing. And then on the fourth, Mars goes into the fifth house, and this is the house of love. But it's also the house of lust, I would say, because it's the house of recreational sex. And Mars is the libido. So if you put those two things together, you can just imagine what this can be. This can be falling in lust with someone, maybe having an affair. Now, that's not to say that an affair can't eventually turn into something that's more, um, you know, like romantic. But if someone gets involved with somebody physically right off the bat, it makes it more likely that they're going to remain, like it's not going to evolve because you know, it went so fast that the, the two people, at least one of those people, might be like thinking, okay, this is just for fun. They're not really invested in it, and they're just doing it for the sake of pleasure, which is, by the way, uh, one of the themes of the fifth house is pleasure. Whatever people find pleasurable. And um, this is also the house of creativity. So you can be motivated to, you know, really jumpstart your creativity. If you have been kind of not doing so for some reason, you could be like, wow, I gotta do this and really put yourself out there. Um, okay, so the, um, the ubiquitous um, lawnmowers, I hear them in the background. It's always um, a horrific sound because I know that, you know, my readings will get destroyed. But what the hell was that? <laughs> but I'm going, I'm just going to kind of power through here and I apologize for this. Um, anyway, 
On the 9th, Mercury goes into Virgo. And on the 12th, three days later, it comes out of its shadow. So when, when um, that's, a, that's important because this is your opposite sign and it went retrograde in your seventh house. And so one thing I forgot to mention is that the seventh house is also the house of legal affairs. So this can be something that um, was initiated and then something postponed it. There was some delay or some, you know, something wasn't right in the documents. And maybe this is a divorce procedure. Maybe this is some kind of a lawsuit. Who knows? But um, now things are going to progress if something was put on hold. So just to let you know about that. And if you were had wedding plans, maybe they had to be postponed for whatever reason. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be something nefarious. It just means that it gets picked up eventually. And it doesn't stay in a state of limbo forever. So then um, on the 17th, we have that lunar eclipse at 25 degrees of Pisces. If you have your sun or ascendant um, somewhere near that degree, then this will be like, especially this will be a conjunction for you, but for everyone, this is your uh, baby, you know, and the first house of the self. What can that possibly mean? And by the way, remember that since this is uh, a powerful full moon, the sun is in opposition. So the sun is in that seventh house and the moon is in your first house of the self. And this can be like a major, I would say like for a sign like Pisces, this can be a major um, download or breakthrough or um, what's that word? I'm looking for a word. Um, revelation. Oh, geez. <laughs> I don't think we're in a flight pattern, but um, sometimes those planes are very loud. Yeah, it can, and it's funny. When I was saying that, it was like 1717, and this is on the 17th. It was, you know, the time of the, the recording. But um, it's like um, a revelation about something that maybe you kept, you were, um, you had like some kind of illusion about or distortion that now you're able to see the truth about, like a blind spot that you're able to see finally. And this is something that I think is particularly um, common with uh, a sign like Pisces, because you tend to sometimes operate in illusion or delusion but it's because you are so sensitive and the truth can sometimes feel threatening it can feel like it's mean like it's trying to deliberately to hurt you and of course we've all heard that saying the truth shall sh set you free and there's a lot of truth to that you know what I mean so just pay attention it, it might not be on this exact day that you feel it you might even feel it in August come to think about it so just keep your eyes open for that on the 22nd and it could change because it's in the first house it could like something could leave your life uh, and it could be in any house I look at the first house as the catch-all house so something could like change dramatically in your life to leave um, your life in that particular particular way uh, but also it might be something that you gain. Um, the full moon time is a very fertile time. It's a great time for manifesting. As a matter of fact, I've, I've read that it's the best time for manifestation. They always talk about the new moon, but yeah. So anyway, this is times three. So, you know, but it's definitely when you're talking about eclipses, you're not really talking about the typical thing where you're setting intentions for what you want, you know, either a solar or lunar, or lunar eclipse, any of those things, it's really about having the grace to accept the, um, the aftermath of whatever the situation is without grasping to it and like allowing change to come in because it's faded change. It's not just random crappy change. It's faded change. On the 22nd, the sun goes into Libra. Now, this is the uh, 
autumnal equinox in the northern hemisphere. This is a big deal. I mean, of course, um, you know, down under and to have the spring, that's a big deal too. I don't know how, you know, cold it gets in any part of Australia, but certainly in the northern hemisphere, the transition from summer to autumn in places where it does get quite nippy is a big deal. And it can really feel like, okay, this is the end of summer. We might be able to uh, kind of fake it until then. Although I live, you know, near Chicago, and I remember last October 2nd, you know, walking al along the lakefront, looking out at Lake Michigan, and there were people in the water because it happened to be a warm day. It might have been 80 degrees last October 2nd. And the water tends to get really cold really quickly after the summer season. So um, I don't know what that was about, but that was pretty late in the season to be swimming like that for all those people. But, um, well, I don't want that many people. <laughs> So anyway, that's happening. And on the same day, Venus goes into Scorpio. So Scorpio is the water sign before you. And this is going to be, you know, these two transits that are in water signs are um, trining you, I mean, as a sign, not maybe personally, but as a sign. And this indicates like a more cooperative um, vibe because it's, it's um, a trine. And Venus, like from the ninth house, this could be like if you are, um, well, I was going to say single, but I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. You might still be legally married or what have you, or still technically involved with someone, but there's love from someone from a foreign country or somebody from another ethnicity, another race, another nationality. Um, this can be money for college. This can be money for a trip. Um, something of money that you earn through publishing. That's ninth house. From spiritual pursuits, money. Like if you're, you you've gotten certified as a yoga teacher and now you're teaching. Maybe this is the first time that you've actually gotten your face first um, earnings from that. On the 20s, oh, and, and by the way, the sun going into Libra is the house right before that, so that's the eighth house. So by the way, you're going to have um, a solar eclipse here, which might be felt in September in Libra, and that will be in that eighth house, and that could indicate some sort of new development with other people's money. So it could be if you're married, your spouse gets a raise. If you're, um, you know, if you've had a loved one cross over, it could be, you know, getting money from a will, something like that. That's a possibility. On the 26th, Mercury goes into Libra. So Mercury goes into that uh, eighth house. And that is, you know, that could be paperwork. That could be discussing, you know, signing a will, discussing, or a divorce decree. You know, I mean, not a divorce decree, but something to do with the money from a divorce or money from uh, maybe like, um, what do you call it? Um, child support or whatever things of that nature that are connected to a marriage or former marriage, negotiations with this money. Uh, and um, like I said, it could be like a will or something along those lines. And uh, you might be discussing other people's money for some reason. So that's what I have for you, Pisces. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.